Ajax is a, a subsidiary of a, of a public company, Biotime, and so uh, I refer viewers to our filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission for more detailed information about our companies. My career interest is in aging, as is Aubrey's and as is this session. And uh, as we all know, we're facing a, a national problem, international problem, really, of chronic degenerative diseases. And what's become apparent, I think the reason uh, large pharma companies are expressing such interest in cell therapies, we can think, for instance, of course, of CAR-T, but not just CAR-T technologies, regenerative medicine in general, is reflected in this graph. A, first, the demographic the dramatic increase in the number of aged people, the fact that 80% of healthcare expenditures are directed toward chronic diseases, and in aging, this is largely the chronic diseases of aging, which we all know about, you know, heart failure, Alzheimer's, osteoarthritis, and so on. And lastly, uh, these chronic degenerative diseases are not particularly well treated with small molecule drugs, and the concept of simply restoring functionality to uh, tissues through the introduction of young regenerative cells uh, has a, a lot of competitive advantages. Another advantage, 90% of drugs that enter clinical trials fail, whereas as you can see here in this data published by the United Network of Organ Sharing, transplantation is, uh, of, of cells and tissues is uh, generally has a, a high safety profile and high efficacy profile. After all, we're restoring functionality to uh, tissues facing degeneration. So as we just heard in the previous talk, <coughs> pluripotency, the ability of taking cells that are capable of making all the cells of the human body has a lot of allure, has a lot of interest to the pharmaceutical industry. Looking at this tree reminds me I think here in the audience uh, is, uh, I've met him outside, Joseph Itzkovich. Joseph, are you here somewhere? Joseph uh, was um, 20 years ago, part of a team, uh, myself and Jaron, Jamie Thompson in Wisconsin, Joseph uh, in uh, Israel, uh, part of a, a team of collaborators that uh, made uh, human embryonic stem cells almost exactly 20 years ago from right now. It was, as I recall, late January, early February that the first colonies of human ES cells appeared in the laboratory dish. I remember Joseph saying in one, some of the news in those days was, you know, history will show that the lasting legacy of this discovery is in aging and applying it to aging and age-related degenerative disease. And here we are now two decades later in a session talking about the application of this technology in aging and age-related disease. So Joseph, you're a prophet from Israel. What's so exciting about these cells? They're uh, an infinitely scalable source of cells, um, reflected by the fact these cells are capable of making and uh, perpetuating the human species from generation to generation. Uh, and uh, they also have a regenerative phenotype, which I want to drill down a bit in my talk today. What do I mean by re regenerative phenotype? We all talk about regenerative medicine. What I'm referring to is this biology reflected in this cartoon that primitive animals in evolution can completely regenerate. We've seen, uh, of course, single-celled animals that can replicate indefinitely in the dish or in the pond. Uh, and then more complex but still relatively primitive animals uh, can completely regenerate. But as we move up the evolutionary tree, that regenerative potential is present and it collapsed in a sense only into early stages of embryonic development. And then you cross what's known as the Weissman barrier where cells become mortal and somatic cells are committed to aging and death. Early in development, animals like planaria can completely regenerate. Uh, so if you cut them in half, they're immortal under the edge of the knife. And uh, you cut the head off, it simply regrows in a couple of weeks. Uh, the head regrows a new tail, and you can do that over and over and over again. 
why cannot humans regenerate tissues injured from disease like aging? Well, just as we saw years ago in, in the study of telomere biology, it appears that replicative immortality is turned off in somatic cell lineages to help prevent cancer. So this is an old theory in the evolution of aging that, called antagonistic pleiotropy. So the idea is there are some genes that affect us later in life differently than they would affect us earlier in life. <clears throat> and nature selects for certain traits in genes or the expression patterns of genes such that it benefits us early in life at the expense potentially of later in life. So the theory would be um, if we turn off the ability to regenerate fully uh, tissues like what planaria can do uh, relatively early in development, the benefits are it helps prevent cancer. The deleterious aspects are later in life uh, we accumulate damage to tissues and they cannot be regenerated. We recently published a uh, study with, uh, in collaboration with In Silico Medicine, which is an artificial intelligence uh, company, uh, looking through millions of data points out there on uh, patterns of gene expression in various embryonic and adult and fetal tissues, and showed that this uh, marker, along with others, is an effective marker of the embryonic fetal transition. So here in this graph, you're seeing on the far left embryonic stem cells. The next little data point is uh, about 100 embryonic progenitor cells. These are embryonic stem cell-derived, uh, diverse, differentiated cell types. But then as you move on, you can see uh, during human skin, in every case, uh, during human fetal development and then subsequent uh, postnatal and then adult development, a gradual increased expression of this gene. This is a, a marker, and uh, we think a bit more of a mark than a marker, of cells th that have traversed this uh, Weissman barrier. They've committed to a non-regenerative phenotype. And consistent with the idea of antag antagonistic pleiotropy, uh, here on the left, you can see various sarcomas have turned this gene off where it should be on, and various carcinomas, uh, all, all that we studied except for one, actually, one melanoma line, all uh, had reverted back to an embryonic regenerative state. So in a sense, cancer is thought of as uh, abnormally regenerative cells. If you take embryonic stem cells and you differentiate them in the dish, uh, the previous speaker talked about uh, the Geron clinical trials, um, manufacturing cells from uh, pluripotent stem cells in a sort of mass differentiation, or m newer technologies which we're largely leveraging where we clonally expand primitive embryonic progenitors that are still to the left, so to speak, of the Weissman barrier, we call that pure stem. We can make over 200 diverse human cell types by clonally expanding embryonic progenitors. And this is basically how we do it. On the left, you can see one cell becoming two, and then later panels, later in time course, we get these clonal populations of various uh, types of primitive embryonic progenitor cell types. And when we look at them in terms of markers of where they the, to the left or to the right of the Weissman barrier, on the left you can see uh, several of these uh, embryonic uh, clonal progenitors made from human embryonic stem cells. And you can see that they're, they have not traversed the barrier in terms of this one marker. And on the right you can see various adult cell, ty cell types as, for comparison. I'll just quickly show you some data on, uh, that's out there. You can find it for yourself in your own data or in the literature. Uh, heart regeneration, we know the heart, uh, amphibians can regenerate heart profoundly so. Uh, humans can early in development, uh, and then it's lost uh, right around the time of birth. And just looking in like, geo profiles, you can find data, for instance, here is uh, uh, gene expression data on the developing uh, mouse heart, and you can see shortly after birth, uh, this uh, expression of this marker uh, is going up, and even so, just after uh, uh, the animals are born. And in uh, studies like uh, Eduardo Marban's work, where he looks at uh, uh, progenitors in the heart capable of regenerating the heart, you can see the same kind of data. 
On the left, you can see this marker COX7A1 is uh, barely expressed at all in uh, progenitors to heart muscle, whereas differentiated heart muscle has turned it back on. Uh, here's an example on the, uh, on the far right. You can see adult ventricular cardiomyocytes, just to the left of that, fetal expressing less, and ES-derived cardiomyocytes. Shaheen Rafi mentioned earlier about most ES or IPS-derived cells in vitro are showing this a lack of maturity, and we think that's actually advantageous that these cells have a regenerative phenotype. Well, how can we use all this? At Ajax, again, a subsidiary of Biotime, another subsidiary being uh, Sterius that's uh, continuing the Geron clinical trials, we're focused on age-related applications of this technology. Uh, one uh, cell type we're interested in manufacturing for, for clinical use are brown adipocytes. For those of you who don't know the story, on the left you can see in, under A the loss, precipitous loss of brown fat tissue as a function of age. Brown fat sort of balances metabolism uh, compared to white fat. So if you uh, eat a lot of calories, uh, brown fat pulls glucose and circulating triglycerides out of the blood and generates heat. And it also makes adipokines, which we believe are beneficial to health. So the transplantation of brown fat tissue in various published studies can uh, restore insulin sensitivity and reduce uh, weight uh, in obese uh, diabetic animals. So we're interested in manufacturing these cells. On the left, you can see fetal brown fat, human brown fat tissue, and stained red are UCP1. Uh, and you can see there are cells there that are UCP1 positive. On the right, you can see these clonal progenitors to brown fat when differentiated into fat are essentially pure, 100% pure uh, brown fat cells. And they're regenerative. So on the left, you can see the UCP1 expression. Uh, and on far right, two samples on the left panel of UCP1 are clonal brown fat progenitors. And then on the panel on the right, you can see this marker of whether, we, are we on the left or the right of the Weissman barrier? And you can see uh, that these cells are still embryonic compared to the even fetal-derived brown fat. As I mentioned, uh, tissues like brown fat make beneficial uh, adipokines, like adiponectin. And here's adiponectin expression on an RNA level in these two uh, clonal progenitors to brown fat on the right, compared to fetal brown fat on the left. There's a large market here. Uh, there's, there's, if you go to the grocery store line, you see all the newspaper ads about obesity. It's, a, well, it's an epidemic in the United States and several countries around the world. And it's estimated that the uh, aging population, up to half of the population, is going to at least be pre-diabetic in the coming decades. So we see this as a significant market opportunity. The previous speakers talked about the value of vascular progenitors as well, and these can be made clonally, as well as vascular smooth muscle components. Also, if you can look here, the left panel is VE cadherin expression, so these group of clones on the left of that VE cadherin expression graph, uh, you can see that they express abundant markers of vascular endothelium. On the right are various kinds of adult endothelium. Uh, these clones uh, made from embryonic stem cells also are very diverse in terms of the types of vascular endothelium. But you can see in the right panel, they all are pre-Weissman barrier. These are all regenerative endothelium. The vascular ischemic markets, of course, are among the highest, largest markets. Uh, in cell therapy, uh, the American Heart Association estimating that cardiovascular disease is going to cost the United States alone over a trillion dollars a year in coming uh, decades. Lastly, I want to point to some future trends we think will be occurring in this field. Uh, we're focused on induced tissue regeneration. I mentioned the Weissman barrier, the regenerative phenotype of, of primitive animals, even primitive vertebrates, and the fact that even humans have that phenotype early in development. Uh, so during embryonic development, we're forming tissues. It's pretty easy to understand why, if they're damaged, they can be regenerated. Uh, but the aging adult clearly cannot. 
can we induce that regenerative phenotype again in vivo using what we've learned about uh, this biology. Um, on the right, you see the results of in vitro reprogramming using KOSM. And you can see this marker is completely reset. Can we do it with small molecules? And can we do it in a way that we do not de-differentiate the cells, but we simply reset the regenerative potential? This is the subject of a program within AJEX called Induced Tissue Regeneration, or ITR. And here I'm showing you some early data on small molecule-based approaches, and these cells are, are, are not reset back to pluripotency, but do show a reversion back to these markers of a regenerative state. So uh, in summary, where we're we at right now, uh, we believe that pluripotency is a powerful platform. Uh, it allows you not only to manufacture many diverse cell types, but cells that are in a regenerative state. It also is a benefit to people, even as fields as diverse as CAR-T. Uh, it's increasingly obvious to those in the industry that to really do quality control and to control the cost of goods, you really need an allogeneic, scalable process. Pluripotent stem cells offer that in terms of scalability, of course, but also the infinite replicative capacity of master cell banks of, say, human embryonic stem cells allow serial genetic modifications, such as those to allow cells to escape immune surveillance or to engineer CAR-T or to engineer a host of other creative uh, modifications for therapeutic benefit. At Ajax, we're focused, as I mentioned, on making brown adipocytes for type 2 diabetes, vascular cells for ischemic disease, and this emerging field called induced tissue regeneration, of which we hope to be a leader. Thank you very much.